What's up guys, in this tutorial we're going to be making a sprint system with stamina inside of Roblox Studio. To get right into it, let's start off with Starter GUI. When we click on this, we want to click on the plus icon to the right of that and we're going to add in a screen GUI. Once this is added, we can easily just rename this over to Stamina GUI, just like this. And inside of here, we're going to insert a frame, which I'm going to name to Stamina Frame. Just like that. After that, we set the anchor point to 0.5 comma 0.5 like this. And that'll make it positioned up in the top left corner, but don't worry because we're gonna change that. Scrolling down inside of the properties, go to the position and then change this to 0.5 comma 0 comma 0.5 comma 0. What this is gonna do is combined with the anchor point property, it's going to position this frame right in the direct center of our screen here. And this will stay true for every device. You can see by going to the test tab and clicking on the device. And you can mess around with any emulated device that you want to. For an average laptop, it's going to be right in the middle. And for any iPhone or whatever you're using. Going down now, we can just change the position on the Y axis, which is the second 0.5. I'm going to do 0.9 so that way it's at the bottom of our screen. And then for the size, I'm going to go ahead and put... 0.3 for the x axis, comma 0, comma 0 0.08, comma 0. Now that this is scaled accordingly, I'm going to click on the plus icon to the right of our stamina frame. I'm going to add in a UI stroke for a nice little outline around our frame here. And I'm going to change the thickness up to 4. After that, insert a brand new frame inside of our stamina frame, and this is going to be our stamina bar. We're going to change the background color to whatever color you want your stamina to be. I'm going to make mine a very nice blue right here because I think that matches it perfectly. After that, scroll down inside of here and change the size to 1, 0, 1, 0, and that'll make sure it takes up 100% of the frame that's inside of, which in this case is our stamina frame. After that, simply click on our stamina frame one more time, click on the plus icon to the right of that, and then insert a text label. For this text label, I'm going to make sure the anchor point is set to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then going down to the background transparency, set that to 1, and for the position, we're going to do 0 0.5 comma 0 comma 0 0.5 comma 0. This will make sure that our text label is perfectly centered inside of our frame. For that, for the size, I'm going to go down right about here and choose 0 0.3 for the x axis and 0 after a comma and then another comma. And then we're going to put 0 0.5. 8 comma and then another 0. This will make sure that it's sized respectively inside of our frame here. And then we just scroll down to the text properties and you can edit this however you want to. I'm personally going to choose the Fredoka 1 font. Make sure the text scale is set to true and that the text color is a much brighter color so we can see it easier. And I'm going to change the text to 100%. After that, I'm going to click on this UI stroke, press Ctrl and D to duplicate it, and I'm going to move it over inside of this text label. That way we can keep a consistent theme inside of all of our GUI. After that, I'm going to rename this text label to percentage, just like this, and we can get scripting now. So let's go over to starter player right here, and we're going to go right into starter character scripts, because we want this local script to start inside of the player's character whenever they join the game. I'm going to click on the plus icon to the right of starter character scripts and I'm going to add in a local script. To start off with this, I'm just going to create a little comment right here for the services section just to keep the code nice and readable. Then we're going to create a variable for user input service. And this is going to be equal to game colon get service parentheses quotation marks and this is going to be user input service. After that, we create another variable for our run service, which is another service inside of Roblox Studio. And this is going to be equal to the same game get service, but with run service instead of user input service. These two lines right here get two important services. The first one is user input service, which is used to handle user input. And the second one is run service, which we use to run code every frame. After we have our services comment right up here, I'm going to create another one for our variables, just to make sure everything stays organized and separate. I'm going to start off by declaring a comment right here for our player variables and I'm going to say local player equals to game dot players dot local player. This will represent the player who's currently playing the game and whoever and whoever's player's character the script is inside of. After that I'm going to create another variable for the character. This is going to be local character will be equal to player dot character or 
player dot character added colon wait. This represents the character controlled by the player and it waits for the character to be available if it's not ready. After that, we're going to create a new variable for the humanoid. This is going to be equal to character colon wait for child parentheses quotation marks and this is going to be humanoid with a capital H just like this. And I'll zoom in real quick. After we have that, I'm just going to create another variable for the player GUI, which is going to be equal to player dot player GUI, just like this. By the way, the humanoid represents the character's humanoid root part. By the way, the humanoid represents the character's humanoid part, which controls things like walking speed and health and other settings. And then the player GUI represents the graphical user interface or the UI or GUI or GUI, however you want to pronounce it for the player. After this, I'm going to declare a new comment for our settings here because we're going to be needing these for our stamina GUI itself. We're going to start off with the stamina itself. And I'm going to set this at a starting point of 100. You can either increase or decrease this depending on the settings that you want for your own game. Then we're going to create a max stamina variable. And this is also going to be equal to 100. The max stamina should be equal to the maximum amount of stamina that you want the player to regenerate to. And the stamina right here is going to be the starting stamina that they start off with. So you can edit these however you want to. After that, I'm going to say local speed difference is going to be equal to something like 8. This will be the difference between speed when the player is sprinting and when the player is walking. After that, I'm going to create a new variable for the drain rate. This will be how fast the stamina will drain away from the player. And I'm just going to set this to 20. Then we'll set a new variable for the refresh rate, which is going to be how fast the stamina goes back. And I'm going to put this at about half of what the drain rate is, which is roughly 10. Then. I'm going to create a local stamina refresh and this is going to be the point that our stamina refreshes immediately once it is completely exhausted. So if we get down to zero stamina, then once it starts regenerating, it's going to start at this number, which means it's going to start at 20 and then go up. You can set this down to zero if you want to. However, I'm just going to leave it at 20 for the sake of the tutorial. After that, I'm just going to create a brand new comment for the booleans. And these are true or false values inside of Roblox Studio. So we want one for sprint held, and this is going to be equal to false. This will tell whether or not the player is holding down the shift to sprint button. We're also going to need one for sprinting to tell if the player is already sprinting or not. And then we're going to create one more variable for whether the player is exhausted or not. And this is going to start off as false. Now we have all of our settings taken care of inside of our variables. We're going to drop down a few more lines and create a few new comments right here. And this is going to be for our functions, just like this. I'm going to create a brand new local function, and this is going to be called sprint. And it's going to take the parameter of act which we'll get into a little later. And we're going to check if exhausted, then we're going to return end just like that. Otherwise, if it's not exhausted, then what we're going to do is just say humanoid.walkspeed will be equal to active and humanoid.walkspeed plus speed difference or humanoid.walkspeed minus speed difference. And after that, we're going to say sprinting equals to active and i'll zoom out here so that you guys can see that full line of code just like this it's a little complicated but once we create and but when we pass this active value to our function we're going to set the walk speed according to whatever that value is that we passed if the value is set to true then we're going to go ahead and set the humanoid walk speed to the walk speed that it's already at plus the speed difference variable right up here which is eight Otherwise, if active is set to false, then we're going to minus the speed difference from the player's walk speed. And then we set the sprinting variable to whether or not active was true or false. Now let's create a brand new local function that's going to handle all of our input. And this is going to be called on input. And it's going to take the parameter of input just like this. It's going to check if input.keycode equals equals to enum.keycode.left shift and input dot user input type does not equal to enum dot user input type dot gamepad one then we're going to say sprint held equals to input dot user input state equals equals to enum dot user input state dot begin 
and then we're going to call our sprint function right here and it's going to take our sprint held value which once again it's going to be one of those either true or false variables or values that we had dropping down a few lines we're going to say local function that's going to be update stamina ui and this is going to have no parameters whatsoever and all we're going to say is we're going to take our player gui and this is going to be editing the stamina gui that we made earlier so we can say player gui dot stamina gui which is going to be this little blue box right here the gui itself dot stamina frame which is this frame right here dot stamina bar which is the frame itself inside of the stamina frame and then we're going to say dot size will be equal to udem2 dot new math dot clamp and it's going to take our stamina variable divided by our max stamina variable which will give us roughly usually a number between zero and one and to make sure it gives us that right outside of here we're just going to put a comma and then zero as the minimum number and then one as the maximum number after that that will determine the size for the x scale number but we still need to take care of all the other numbers. So we're going to say zero on the X offset and then one on the Y scale. That is the up and down. We want to make sure it still takes up the entire size of that. And then we simply put another comma and another zero after that. We also want to say player GY dot stamina GY dot stamina frame once again. But this time we're going to grab the percentage, which is this text label right here. And this dot text is going to be equal to to string, which is going to convert the number or variable that we put inside of here to a string, which in this case is going to be math dot floor stamina. So math dot floor returns the largest integer smaller than or equal to whatever the number is that we put inside of here. And integer is not a number. There is a difference between those two. An integer is what's called a whole number most of the time. It does not have a decimal point or a float as you might have heard, whereas a number can go into the decimal points. And we use math.floor because when we're gonna be using run service a little later on, things can get a little complicated with all those decimal points. So we wanna make sure that everything looks nice right here by using math.floor. Anyways, we use string concatenation right here to concatenate two different strings. Well, three different strings technically. We have our stamina, and then another string for the slash right here. Otherwise, you can leave this at a percentage. Otherwise, if you want to do it the way I'm doing it, you can just put a slash right here. And then we use dot dot again for the same two string and then math dot floor. This is going to be our max stamina this time. And that is perfect for our update stamina UI right here. Anyways, it's about time that we go ahead and call a few of these functions right here before we get started on our run service because what happens with run service and loops is that since it's happening every frame it can't really go past the code unless we use coroutines and all sorts of different things like that so instead we're just going to call the things right here so we're going to say user input service dot input began we're going to connect on input just like this and then we can do the same thing for user input service dot input ended and we're going to connect on input just like this after that we get our run service dot heartbeat and as you can see right here this is going to fire every frame after the physics simulation has completed and then we're going to do colon connect function inside of here and this function is going to take the parameter of delta time. And in case you don't know, the delta time parameter represents the time elapsed since the last frame or the previous frame, allowing for smoother base calculations, basically. And so we're going to be using this delta time to make sure we get a precise amount of time before the previous frame. So that way it stays the same amount of time for every player. Because what this is doing is it basically relies on the frame rate of the player to connect a function off of. So if someone has 60 frames per second, whereas another person is only getting 20 frames per second, then the person with 60 frames per second is going to regenerate stamina much faster than the person with only 20 frames per second. So that's why we use delta time to make sure that we have the precise amount of time elapsed since the previous frame instead of just relying on frames the whole time, if that makes sense. So now we're going to check if our sprinting variable right here is set to true, then we're going to say stamina equals to math dot max which is going to return a maximum value among the numbers passed to the function that's going to take zero comma our stamina minus our drain rate variable 
and this is going to be times delta time like this. So this line right here is going to decrease the player's stamina based on the drain rate value, which is the rate at which stamina is drained per second. And so we use math.max right here to ensure the stamina never goes below zero. After that, let's call our update stamina UI right here function just to make sure we update the UI whenever we make a change to it. For an additional resource, if you want to, we can print out math.floor and this is going to be our stamina variable. And this will make sure that we can actually keep track of our stamina value inside of the output if you prefer that. Then we're going to check if stamina equals equals to zero. Then we're going to call our sprint function and it's going to be false to make sure we turn sprinting off. And then exhausted is going to be equal to true, which means that we're not going to be able to sprint again until exhausted is equal to false. Let's drop a line right here and then click on else. So if the player was not sprinting whenever this heartbeat connected a function right here, then we're going to say stamina equals to math dot min which is the minimum and it's going to return the minimum value among the numbers passed to the function instead of the maximum and it's going to be 100 and then our stamina minus well not minus plus refresh rate times delta time just like this so instead of decreasing the player's stamina this one's going to increase the player's stamina based on the refresh rate variable which is the rate at which stamina is refreshed per second and the math.min once again is to make sure that the stamina never exceeds 100. now we're going to check if stamina right here is greater than or equal to stamina refresh then not only are we going to update stamina ui like this we're also going to set exhausted equal to false and we're going to print math.floor once again our stamina variable just as an additional resource that we can see what's happening inside of here then we're going to check if sprint held then we're going to say sprint equals to true just right here as a parameter that we're going to be passing through so this line right here is checking if the player's stamina has reached or exceeded the stamina refresh threshold and we call our update stamina ui once again we set the exhausted value to false that way we can go ahead and sprint again and then we print out some more stuff and we sprint equals to true again basically so in summary this heartbeat function right here although it looks complicated it's actually simple once you get to understand it in summary it continuously updates the player's stamina based on whether or not they're sprinting and it also manages exhaustion updates the ui to reflect stamina changes and it's going to print the stamina value for whatever purpose we need it for whether that be for debugging whether that be just for watching the numbers go up or down and overall this is looking pretty cool let's go ahead and click on play here and test it out so as you can see in the output right here it's saying that my stamina is at 100 and the bar right here is also saying 100 if I press shift, however, you can see I'm sprinting, I'm going slightly faster, and the stamina bar itself is going down. And once you can see, once that got to zero, it popped right up to 20 right here and slowly regenerating. If I want to, I can run again. It's going to continue to use up that stamina GUI. So you can see overall, this is a pretty cool system. I personally enjoy using this myself in most projects that I have that require a sprinting system. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video just as much as I did, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.